All right. This one's for you, Sagittarius. That's you here, Sagittarius. This is Tarot Illumination with your singles mini love and relationship report for late October, early November 2017. Okay. You know the drill. Watch for your sun, moon, and rising. Squish it all together. Reinterpret. Make it your own story. Now, on this little video, you're going to stop and start and pause whenever you need so you can integrate all of this with the reading itself as the cards play out. So I don't have to take up all of your time. All right. Cards were well shuffled in advance, but we're going to go to the last second here so that you're a witness. Then we're going to cut and then we're going to read. No oracles, no jumpers, no reversals. Very simple bare bone uh, tarot and we're going to let the story tell itself all right here we go bang sorry i like to bang the cards to clear to clear things i hope you don't mind sagittarius this is what we do here so you know tarot illumination is not a fortune teller we're just talking about potential here potential energy okay it's up to you to make your decisions so this would be you. What is the love energy that you would be radiating? This would be the potential other. What if? What if? What would their love energy be? This would be the relationship itself. If, let's just say, what if something like this happens? And this would be the prospect. Let's say something like this happens. Where does this lead? What's the momentum here? And we're going to look at this in a moment. This is the, let's say, prevailing conditions around you right now, Sagittarius. And you're going to make the best of it, whatever it is. You're not going to let the weather own you. Okay? Sorry to sound so pushy, but, uh, you know, some people are very swayed by the weather. You're going to make the best of it. So you've got the Empress. Okay. So forget the gender. We're just talking about energy here. So guys can watch this too. It doesn't matter. Let's just say you're absolutely ripe at this moment. In other words, Sagittarius, even though, let's just, I'm going to do something here. I didn't do this with all the reports, but even though, Sagittarius, you might feel like you're under a lot of pressure right now because Saturn is in Sagittarius right here, okay? It's hovering right up in the late 20s degrees. And for some people, that could be a Saturn return. But it's in a very tight, hard square at this period of time right now uh, with the, uh, the Virgo-Pisces axis. So, you know... Things could feel pretty tough for you in the, and in the dynamic of relationship here. But also, don't forget, you've got all this fire energy working for you. So, what do we have? The Empress. So, my feeling is that, let's just say you've lived through the last couple of years, and it might have been very, very tough for you, Sagittarius, having to go through a lot of, like, truth-telling, truth-seeking, truth-reckoning, and really, really kind of upgrading yourself as though the, the police are watching you all the time, making sure that you, you know, get everything right. And there's no shortcuts here. It's been a long, tough journey for you, Sagittarius. But look what happens when you, let's say, take care of yourself properly, look after things properly, nurture yourself properly, where you become like at one with your environment where... Uh, you can, let's say, be fertile, be very ripe, be very opportune, be kind of like glowing as a very, very attractive, like beautiful person right now who has all the qualities that anyone else would desire in another potential mate. So that's a lovely card to have here to encourage you. to. It's an indication that this is potentially out there for you. This, can, In other words, if you can tune into this kind of energy, of the Empress, Sagittarius, you can make that work for you. So it's almost like saying, hey, can I borrow your clothes just for the evening to go out? <laughs> so I look cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just messing around there. All right, so let's have a look. What uh, would you be radiating yourself? Well, ha, 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 da, la, di, da, di, da. This is the King of Pentacles here. So you might be kind of feeling right now through this October, November period here where you've kind of got things sorted out to the point where you're actually radiating very, very 
attractive, appealing energy where you've done a lot of homework on yourself and it's been a grind, but you've earned your credentials, you've earned your, let's say, status, you've earned your titles, your certificates, your abilities, your qualities, your gifts that make you appealing. And you just, it didn't just happen because like you were just born awesome. The King of Pentacles has been through anything and everything, war, torture, incredible hardship, grind, incredible bounty, and they figured out how to make it all work so that it lasts for the long term and they can keep it going. So if you're radiating that kind of energy, that's really good news, Sagittarius, because it makes you very appealing to others, especially if they're seeking a good catch. Not everybody's seeking a good catch. Some people are really messed up and they like to they, they tend to attract other people who are really messed up and that and they, they learn about themselves through each other. But right now at this little time period, there's an awful lot of awesomeness going on with you, Sagittarius. And the situation is very ripe and very fertile for you to um, make the best of this situation, okay? Make the best of how attractive you are right now, having this much degree of sovereignty of self. So what would that attract? What's the potential here? We're just, so we've just started. Let's have a look. Okay. We might be attracting here for you, Sagittarius, someone who's actually very attracted to your kind of stability and substance and strength and power and sovereignty of self. The other person may feel as though that's what they need in their life. Someone of substance, a person of substance, whereby they can feel that this is a really like rock solid potential mate, a rock solid partnership to the point where, let's just say it, they might get a little clingy, you know, because once somebody finds a really good catch, because it's often very, very hard to find a really good catch. And when you've got one, you don't let go. OK, so you might just attract someone who is actually kind of on the same wavelength for you in terms of like being appealing. But it's almost like they spotted you before you spotted them. And all of a sudden they're like, well, not all of a sudden, but it could indicate that you, Sagittarius, are just being you. And you start to attract someone who's very attracted to you because you've got all this. You're radiating all this, which is very appealing. And so it's just like you become very, very magnetic to others who are seeking that kind of awesomeness. And because that's what they might be wanting or have wanted for a long time, and they want to lock it down, they want to own it, they, make, they want to make it substantial, they want to build a foundation based on that awesomeness, and they want to share it. Nothing wrong with the Four of Pentacles here because they think long term. They understand the importance of really good, solid foundations for the long term. OK, so let's have a look. What would the nature of the relationship be if you attracted someone like this into your life, Sagittarius? Let's have a look. Remember, this is all what if, you know, Sagittarius singles. This is all what if. OK. On the understanding that you're always radiating the energy of relationship anyway. So what would the nature of the relationship be if this sort of person was attracted to you or you attracted that person? Well, it could be a little bit of just what you need right now. With the Page of Swords here, it might actually shake you up and wake you up a bit in ways that you might not have expected. For example, you might not have realized that you have become so appealing and so attractive to others. And you might not realize that um, this is kind of a new experience for you. So the relationship itself could be very, let's say, invigorating to the point where it's, it allows both parties to safely, let's see, let's just say, call each other out on an as-needed basis <clears throat> in order to maintain the integrity and the solidity for the long term of the relationship. So all of this awesomeness and fertility and creativity and beauty here can be captured and consolidated 
and owned in the relationship because there's so much potential substance here. So the relationship dynamic itself could like feel like like always keeping a really close on the eye on each other where like if this person showed up it might be you might feel as though like they're always like checking and double checking to make sure that the integrity of the relationship is maintained to the highest standards and once you start to see how that actually kind of works that's kind of cool to have that faculty in the context of relationship that can inspire you to want to do the same in other words oh hmm, interesting so if you're going to call me out anytime that i'm slacking in the relationship then you know what i am going to call you out anytime i feel like things are slacking in the relationship from your side of the things because we both understand as we learn and grow through this that by not allowing each other to slack off or to let's say take the relationship for advantage for granted then you keep the relationship alive and clean and clear it's kind of like having a bs meter that's active and you're both acting as a bs meter on each other you for them and them for you which keeps the relationship alive like clean and like sparkling okay which is kind of cool so hmm and there's no harm intended here it's not that like it's meant it's in it's malicious in any way it's just very very like thoughtful conscientious like ma it's like maintenance you know relationships need maintenance you know you just don't just suddenly have a relationship and there they are and all of a sudden wow everything's figured out you're going to be happy forever after a good healthy relationship needs maintenance where both parties are aware of each other, they're aware of the relationship, and they're aware that the relationship itself needs maintenance. It's not all about, what can I get out of you, or what are you trying to get out of me? No. Not in this relationship, no. So what's the momentum here? What are the prospects? Let's just have a look. What if? What if? Okay. Oh, okay, well, let's just look at the positive side here. What can happen is that, let's just say you attract this kind of relationship, all right, Sagittarius? And you start to see how it works. You start to see how it brings out the bounty of yourself, the bounty of another, and it puts you in a situation where the relationship uh, has like a, like, a, like, like a maintenance program where you give yourselves permission to call each other out in order to maintain the integrity and the value and the beauty of the potential of this relationship. So what where it can lead you is to like the flip side of that is always becoming aware of what's not working in the relationship. In other words, when you have this degree of vigilance going on in the relationship in order to protect the relationship, it could be almost to the point of taking it too far to the point where it could feel a little bit niggly, like like you're always watching me, you're always like pointing out of the flaws, or you're always pointing out the flaws. So what can happen is every time an issue is exposed that needs maintenance, it could cause over and above and beyond unnecessary stress and grief and anxiety compared to the actual uh, size or scale of the problem in the relationship. In other words, what might be a really small problem in a relationship could feel like it's really overblown when it really isn't because all it is is just that if you've got a relationship dynamic that's like built in such a way that you've always got this like uh, maintenance program app that's always operating where there's always a little button that goes doop, doop, caught you out we need to sort this out and then another app goes caught you out we need to sort that out and that app is functioning all the time it can it can might it might make the relationship feel like god this is just a grind you know it doesn't have to be that way but it could feel that way at moments in time where the the beauty and the substance of the relationship could be undermined by the two parties always calling each other out or always feeling like they have to 
be on high alert for what's not working. So in other words, Sagittarius, this doesn't have to own you, okay? It's just that this is a potential a prospect or a momentum of what could happen in the context of this kind of relationship. It doesn't mean it's a horrible relationship. It just means that any time that something or anything, even the tiniest little niggly thing that goes wrong or out of whack, it could feel very annoying because you're setting very high standards for yourself. The Page of Swords is the vigilante of truth. They like purity, they like honesty, they like integrity. So just the slightest aberration from honesty, integrity could feel like, oh gosh, what did I say wrong now? Or like, oh gosh, what did I do wrong now? Ooh, ooh. It's not that serious, okay, Sagittarius? It's good. Having the Page of Swords here is really good. You just don't have to take it all so personally, all right? So good luck, Sagittarius. I wish you all the best. And you know the drill, make the most of it. I'll just put this here for reference. And then you can stop, start, and pause so you can reinterpret and make this into your own story. Okay? Thank you, Sagittarius. Have a good one. Bye-bye.